I have a little guest. I have a spider in the front of my van. Several people have been asking for a tour of the interior of the step van, but that presents a couple of different problems. Um, mostly that this channel started about five months after I purchased the step van, and I've done some work in the back, so it doesn't look exactly like when I bought it, and I think it's important to show sort of the before and the after. So what I've done is I've gone back into the archives and I found some video footage that I used before in the vlogs and I've pulled that out so you can see what the step van looked like just after I purchased it when I was walking through it. And then I'll add in some little points and, and things that I've noticed are missing there that I think are interesting that you might enjoy for the interior tour. So there's some new material, there's some old material. I think this is the best solution. I hope you enjoy it. This first scene that I'm gonna show you is me driving the step van for the very first time just prior to buying it and you'll be able to see over my shoulder there's no partition like there is here right now and you'll be able to see over my shoulder the back of the step van and um, sort of the way it looked then all right well, moving forward this seems to have lots of power the engine seems to run really well a lot of vibration here more vibration than i really uh, like The next scene I have that I've pulled out of my archives is actually sort of a walkthrough of the back explaining the um, insulation in the ceiling that came with the step van the way it was when I purchased it. Then sort of you can see the side panels, the walls, how it was set up with um, the rib and the all aluminum cab that goes around it. This is a Grumman Olsen step van so it's 100% aluminum from the actually including the floor the floor the ceiling the walls everything there is very very little in the way of steel i think the only piece of steel is right behind me the only piece of steel in the step van in the cab area is this piece of steel that goes right across the top of the partition divider and then there used to be a sliding door here which the previous owner had taken out and it slid along this track along uh, this area up here but this is actually steel i can put a magnet on it everything else is aluminum when i purchased the vehicle and did the little tour i talked about the ceiling being slightly lower well there's a reason for that this particular ceiling here is actually just an aluminum sheet and behind it there's insulation so there's about uh, probably two inches worth of insulation. You can see right here the distance in the gap between the true rooftop and the gap that's here for the insulation. So I'm going to be removing this panel here and redoing the insulation in the roof. Uh, and it'll probably go back to this original height once I'm finished so that I'm still able to easily walk around in here. Um, and that's still plenty. Uh, of height for me. I've got a good two or three inches above my head um, after the insulation is in. I have some plumbing going back here, going across. I'll be removing all of that and for some reason this light is put here in the back apparently for loading or working on things uh, at night when they're servicing other vehicles. It has a set of double doors with uh, small windows in it. The doors do not extend all the way to the edges, which would be my ideal, what I would really like to see. Sometime in the future, um, I'll hope to find a fabricator to help me put uh, double doors, barn doors, to go all the way across. But I'm sure this is just so you can open this door and have it be flat on the back and not uh, go out into traffic or into uh, a freeway or something like that. So it's probably just, just for convenience and safety for uh, those are driving and the shelves are here so you wouldn't really need to open it all the way up like a moving truck One of the interesting things that I've never shown in any of the videos is the wiring the wiring all runs through this uh, corrugated 
uh, plastic tubing and it's currently using this black corrugated plastic tubing and then there's little wires that go out to like the front cab lights here and somebody's wired a fuse in this location for this fan that's on the front right here. I have a little guest. I have a spider in the front of my van. Don't worry, I took the spider and I put him outside. I had noticed there was a spider in my van the past few days. I've been walking through cobwebs and I haven't been able to find him or locate him. So I just found him. Um, I set him outside, gave him a nice bush to sit in. Uh, hopefully he'll enjoy his new home. One of the cool interior features that I like is this sunshade that is right over the driver's window. There's not one on the passenger side but it's um, a lever mechanism so it has rods where it connects here on this side and you can pull it down it's a little bit of a challenge to pull down but i love the infinite flexibility in that you can adjust this angle here this way that way i've got it pretty tight right now and then you can go up or down so typically i just pull it down like this uh, as i need it it's really great though, I like it a lot. The ceiling has support ribs that go side to side and they're probably about every foot apart. And these are made 100% of aluminum. On the edges here you can see that the wiring goes through this plastic conduit. It's corrugated conduit, it's split so you can access the wiring inside of here if need be. And it goes right through the edge of the support ribs that go all the way across so you can easily access it in the corners of the cabs. And then this wire goes down here to the fuse box. Behind me is the doghouse. It's this cover right here and it goes over the back side of the engine. So half of the engine uh, goes out into the hood area. It can be easily accessed from that side. And you can actually reach in and reach around and get to this area back here. But there are some components that are easier to get to from this side. Um, there's four latches. There's two up here at the top that can be released here and here and then these rubber latches here that you just lift up and pull them down. Then there's a gasket seal which I need to replace that goes around the edges here. These are the window cranks and they're a little bit funny because they stick out a good probably two or three inches away from the actual surface of the door and the reason for that is as this handle approaches the pocket there's a piece of um, extruded metal over here that is sort of in the way. Let me show you what I mean. If you watch this knob here you'll see that it approaches this edge. So it needs to be able to clear this if you want to be able to turn it while the door is open. I want to show you the driver's seat. It's a little bit unique on step vans in that it rests completely on this post and part of the reason for it being on a post is there's a set of steps right here and so there's no way you could put a full box across here because this is perched right on the edge of the steps. Um, right now it's suggested to the maximum height. It's not quite tall enough for me. I may end up extending this post or replacing this with another seat but I've got to find out what my options are given that I have a very minimal space that I can install things that sort of needs to fit on this post. One other thing that I want to point out is that my seat belt is not the three-point harness of most modern seat belts. It's only a lap belt. And I'm not sure exactly why this is. Somebody once told me or wrote one of the comments that this is just common in delivery vans so that they can pull it on and off easily. But in my mind, it's the same amount of buckling to put it on and off. It's really just a comfort issue. But I did look and there were two options here for the seat belts and this was one of the options. Maybe it's just being cheaper. Uh, eventually I'd like to replace this with a three point so I get something going across my chest. Another unique feature of this particular step van is it's an automatic but there is no position for park. There's no P. This, this lever here goes directly up and down, reverse, neutral, drive, third, second and first. So you put it in neutral when you're parked and you have to put on the parking brake. It's critical to put the parking brake on. That's all I have for my interior tour. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. This is sort of the tour prior to the build out. I'll probably do a tour every six months or so, maybe once a year so that you can see the progress and get a tour and an update on new things that have been installed. 
but sort of at the beginning of the channel I wanted to give a tour prior to the build so you can see what it looked like when it was completely empty before I've done anything to it. I know the reason she's so far away. 